Okay, welcome. Uh, so my name is Guillermo. I am the chief enterprise architect uh, in Sweden uh, within the service company in Sweden. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about uh, why that is important. Uh, also, I will primarily focus on our journey and uh, the business value today. So, so it will be some tech, but uh, mostly on, on our journey. So, uh, quickly about Antisemex. So, Antisemex's mission is to prevent and protect. We are most known for pest control, uh, but we are much more than that, as you can see in the image here. So, we have multiple service areas, like pest control, fire safety, food safety, house inspections, moisture control, and also an insurance company. So that's why it's important. So I work for the service company, but we also have an insurance company. Uh, we are also a large corporation uh, uh, internationally. Uh, and our majority owner is AQT. So it's, uh, so it's a very strong owner for, for Antisemex. Uh, Antisemex was uh, found in... Uh, Sweden, 1934. Uh, so we have been around for a long time. Uh, Antisimex is also a household name in Sweden. Uh, we are the market leader in pest control uh, in many countries, and we have around 35 branches covering all of Sweden. Okay, so I would like to start with a, a small or perhaps big reflection. Uh, I don't know if you agree with this, uh, uh, let me see, with this statement, uh, but uh, I would love to talk to you afterwards and, and uh, hear about your own experience about this. So we all know that we have large amounts of data and we all do our best to get wisdom from it. Uh, we have the facts and insights, but sometimes we can't see the forest for all the trees. Uh, Antisemex works with uh, data on different areas. Uh, one of our profile product is Antisemex Smart, uh, our leading digital solution for pest control. And we have thousands of digital traps uh, in Sweden. They are above ground and underground. Uh, and we use them for efficient and sustainable pest control protections. So those traps are also IoT units that collect large amounts of data uh, that give us uh, many insights. So we know where the problems are. So we know where the rats are. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, about our solution. So, to summarize, uh, Antisemex was replacing one of its main business support systems, sometimes called of ERP systems, uh, so where we have all the business critical uh, actions. Uh, at the same time, uh, we needed to replace the, the old uh, BA solution, but we have another problem as well. Uh, there was a built-in to be BI solution that would not deliver as expected. So we have a problem. Uh, and we didn't have too much time to solve this problem. Uh, so we, we, we uh, discovered that this built-in solution, again, will not deliver uh, uh, so, we needed a new solution. Uh, so, we needed to replace the legacy and promise sol uh, solution, uh, which is traditional, you know, virtual machine with installed software. Uh, its main purpose was to fulfill operations, uh, operational business uh, reporting, uh, and was hooked up with the old ERP system. The old solution required life, ma life cycle management, was not suitable for, for big data. You know all the reasons uh, uh, on, on those on-prem solutions. Uh, the to be solution was based on a consultancy packaging 
uh, which has serious drawbacks uh, in different areas and will not fulfill business need. It was also practically updated from start. So uh, we have a timeline. So from project start to go live, it was approximately six months to deliver. Uh, uh, the essential for operational business follow-up. So otherwise we would be blind. Uh, another interesting thing uh, uh, was the challenge, uh, obviously, is that the new business support system that have many modules was also under development uh, and had been for quite some time. And uh, no matter what, it needed to go live at the same time. Uh, so uh, it's always uh, challenging to work in with a moving target as well. Uh, so uh, it was a significant effort uh, to, for change management and to implement the necessary capabilities to really take a leap into the cloud. Uh, so uh, and then obviously uh, last uh, bullet there cost. And I would like to uh, read the first bullet again uh, uh, to understand why cost was a sensitive <laughs> issue for us. OK, so the journey was obviously challenging. We were not only replacing a solution, we were also building a, a base plate for our data capability. Uh, we were also introducing the cloud uh, for this uh, area uh, and new concepts as uh, low code and obviously data warehouse automation. So there was completely new concepts uh, uh, besides the solution. Uh, the business case, so as often but not always, IT and business lacked alignment and the solution needed to focus on deliver business values and be sustainable. So we needed to make it right this time. Uh, the, tech choice was, uh, the tech choice was based on what would deliver business need, would deliver most value on short time and cost. Uh, we also took into consideration what would fit best our current ecosystem. So uh, then we have to select a partner. So our approach for the project was to select a partner that would deliver a complete team with the competence we needed. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, due to a very short timeline, we didn't have other options, uh, uh, for example, contracting individuals. Uh, so we scanned the market and uh, for medium-sized vendors, uh, created a short list and made our evaluation uh, within uh, a month's uh, time. Uh, the delivery method was uh, uh, agile, and it was a mix of two to three weeks sprint in length because we needed to follow up very closely the progress uh, since uh, we were very short on time. Uh, as you can imagine, the business and the team had a very hectic period since we had a partial moving target as a source. Uh, but uh, I will talk about this a little later. The automation tool that we use helps us to quickly adapt to fast changes. Uh, eventually, uh, there was a delivery, uh, and uh, uh, as always, we were a little bit late. <laughs> uh, but uh, we made it, uh, uh, and uh, we have to, as usual, fix some bugs afterwards, uh, but uh, we, we made, uh, we, we took the challenge and we fixed the challenge. Uh, so year 2020 uh, was mainly focused to uh, complement with all other operational reporting that was necessary. Uh, but we also started with things that will give us better insight. So during 2021, we enhanced with much, much more focusing not on only the operational reporting, but also uh, uh, on, on new things that will give us better insights and to be able to predict the, the future. 
Uh, so in our roadmap, we have focused uh, much more for, uh, for uh, next year to, to really work with the predictive analytics. Okay, uh, we have some principles uh, when we started this journey. Uh, uh, and as you see, we keep it simple. Uh, uh, that's important, focus on the business value. So we chose tech that has a, a wide a, a competence that was available. Uh, so tech that also is not resource heavy. Uh, so we work, for example, with uh, uh, platform as a service uh, 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 software. Solution where cost was dynamic and based on us usage or a subscription model. So we didn't want to have an upfront investment. So that was also very important for us. Uh, a solution that we could scale and grow with, uh, a solution that focused on business value, uh, and a solution that would allow us to deliver in phases. So a solution that we obviously could, could grow and deliver in phases. About the uh, platform and architecture then. So, uh, the architecture conceptually uh, consists of a data hub, a data lake, a data warehouse, cubes, and also uh, the vis visualization part. A data hub that collects data from multiple sources and uh, also with data distribution capabilities. So we can distribute data uh, for other uh, needs, for example, uh, share data uh, with uh, our uh, uh, other companies, for example. Um, but we don't have uh, MDN capabilities yet. That's also on our uh, roadmap. So a data lake with uh, raw data, one-to-one -one data with both structure and structure uh, data from uh, a system of record sources. Uh, a data warehouse uh, with both persisted and log logical layers with a corporate data model based on business terms, and a dimensional model for analytics. And uh, cubes for search service analytics for, for more advanced users, for those who want to dig on the data. And we have then uh, uh, dashboards as uh, visualization. So as I mentioned earlier, we use uh, only uh, past services, so platform as a service uh, services. Uh, to minimize uh, uh, resource-intensive in, uh, uh, um, uh, problems. And the software we use is uh, um, Azure uh, SQL, uh, different flavors of it, uh, Azure Analysis Services, Power BI Premium, and for automation, we use uh, Wearscape. Okay, so uh, uh, benefit. Uh, so on uh, the platform-wise, uh, you know, we don't need a traditional database infra inf infrastructure maintenance since it's on the cloud, but also it's uh, as POS services. Uh, this offers automated backups, 99% uptime, automated patching, version updates, it's convenient to manage scalability for computer storage and so on. So everything that uh, simplifies our life. Uh, data warehouse automation uh, offers a uniform way to structure uh, uh, and load data and process data uh, with templates and uh, common patterns. Uh, so uh, this automation uh, uh, is also a code generator uh, and uh, uh, creates as well uh, automatic uh, uh, documentation and data lineage. So uh, uh, we do quite little SQL, uh, actually. So with this tool, we have a unified uh, 
tool that uh, uh, that generates almost everything that we need in the in the data warehouse. Uh, so there are uh, obviously some exceptions when the, we do some uh, SQL coding, but uh, uh, in general, very little. We want to use automation as much as possible. Uh, so other benefits with this is obviously that uh, uh, we can deliver faster, uh, but we can also uh, adapt to uh, change very quickly. So if we have uh, uh, new requirements, uh, we need this field, this, that, this data, and so on, it's very quickly to, to uh, include that. Uh, we will reduce costs, obviously, because we become more efficiently. Uh, we have a greater consistency uh, about the solution, so we don't have a spaghetti and so on. We have a more control uh, handling of the uh, data loads and transformation. Uh, it's also easy to evolve and expand uh, the solution. Uh, and we have automatic uh, documentation. So. Uh, who likes to document the data warehouse and keep it uh, up to date. That's quite uh, difficult. Uh, as uh, life cycle management be uh, benefits, uh, obviously uh, it accelerates the delivery. Uh, it's simply to adjust uh, when uh, changes are required. Uh, to mention our main business benefits, uh, the main benefit is that uh, business people have the same facts and trust the numbers. So CEO, brand chief, sales chief, uh, no one needs to dispute the information uh, uh, anymore. Uh, I then don't need to dig for data like the old days. So uh, the solution is also user-friendly which make it simpler for everyone to understand the facts. So the business nowadays don't focus to, uh, on digging on data, they focus on acting on the data insights uh, and a complete different level today, like the old solution. Uh, so when they sit in a room, they discuss what are we going to do about these facts, rather than thinking, of, is this really true? Uh, so uh, services are also uh, more aligned with sales expectations and which are not. So it's much simpler to see uh, how efficient are we on the field, how are customer rating our service, uh, and also where. Uh, it could be, you know, geographical differences. Uh, and I would say our best rating right now is that our CEO is happy because he can really uh, see and act and predict the future uh, nowadays. So that was my uh, last uh, slide. Thank you for listening.